Hello world. I'm Imagination. Today I am going to talk about self-driving cars. A self-driving car, also known as an autonomous vehicle, AV, connected and autonomous vehicle, CAV, driverless car, robocar, or robotic car, is a vehicle that is capable of sensing its environment and moving safely with little or no human input. Self-driving cars combine a variety of sensors to perceive their surroundings, such as radar, LIDAR, sonar, GPS, odometry, and inertial measurement units. Advanced control systems interpret sensory information to identify appropriate navigation paths, as well as obstacles and relevant signage. What's the first major benefit of a self-driving car service? It may become much easier to find a parking spot. Actually, you might never need to think about parking a car in the first place. Your car will simply drop you off, and continue on its way to find another passenger and it can continue to go all day until it needs a recharge. As of July 2019, experts believe it will be at least 10 to 12 more years before completely autonomous vehicles will be sold to private consumers. Self-driving cars are being developed for a few main reasons. Firstly, the goal is to remove the possibility of human error on the roads and improve safety. Driverless cars will also dramatically increase transportation efficiency because they do not need to be parked, they can constantly be in use by society. Tesla will be able to make its vehicles completely autonomous by the end of 2020, founder Elon Musk has said. It was already very close to achieving the basic requirements of this level 5 autonomy, which requires no driver input, he said. Tesla's current, level 2 autopilot requires the driver to remain alert and ready to act, with hands on the wheel. But a future software update could activate level 5 autonomy in the cars, with no new hardware, he said. Chinese ride-hailing firm Didi Chuxing says it plans to operate more than a million self-driving vehicles by 2030. The robotaxis are to be deployed in places where ride-hailing drivers are less available, according to Meng Singh, Didi's chief operating officer. It is expensive to own and maintain a personal vehicle. Driverless cars come with the possibility of cheap and convenient transport. Ride services like Uber will probably own fleets of driverless cars, and without the option of human drivers to pay. The running costs of such a fleet would be ridiculously low. Self-driving electric cars running on renewable energy will cost almost nothing to operate. If you can summon them and get to your destination in just a few minutes, what would you need your own car for? Driverless cars can reduce harmful emissions by up to 60%. Furthermore, these cars can be programmed to maximize the potential reductions, which is amazing news for the environmentally conscious and anyone who wants to leave a minimum impact on Mother Earth. Today. Cities are designed for cars. Roads and highways have taken over, and cities have become less and less pedestrian-friendly. The advent of driverless cars could bring a shift to this phenomenon, reverting city design back to being of and for the people. More precise driverless cars mean narrower streets, with larger spaces for pedestrians. Fewer cars mean fewer traffic jams. Today's cars are not user-friendly for the elderly or disabled, or anyone else who may have difficulty getting around. Paratransit services with wheelchair accommodation, or even hospital bed accommodation, and cars with braille buttons will be normal. And the smart driverless car will know how to find the easiest place for its passengers to board or alight from, making their lives easier. Not having to drive means you can sit in your car and work on your way to the office. You can also choose to make the driverless car your office, driving around to clients, and having meetings on the go. The fact that we have driverless cars means that vans, trucks, and buses can also be driverless. These can be converted into actual offices or stores. You can have a business model where clients order up service and it drives to them. The need for a short commute to work is one of the main reasons why people live close to towns. If people do not need to drive to work, they would be more inclined to live further away and just relax on the commute to and from work, without the craziness of traffic jams. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.